Today, we're going to look at my doll haul from the 74th annual UFDC doll convention in Bellevue, Washington. You're watching Dolls with D. So last month, I went to the very marvelous convention. It's the annual convention of the United Federation of Doll Clubs and um, had a wonderful time as always. I'm Region 8 Director for the UFTC. Region 8 is Tennessee, Kentucky, and North Carolina. So that's my area, but um, the entire membership, whoever could, came for this fantastic convention. We had over 700 collectors, and if you've never been to UFTC convention, it's an amazing time. There are doll lectures, um, seminars, there's programs. You can go to dinners and luncheons where there are doll souvenirs. There's an incredible doll sales room. Um, there are doll exhibits. There's just so much going on. And um, But this particular video is to show you what I brought back from my visit uh, to the convention. So this year, my you're going to notice when you take a look at the dolls and things I brought home that everything's very small. No large dolls because I had to go directly from the UFDC convention to visit my daughter in Japan. And I definitely did not want to bring anything over for customs reasons, as well as I didn't want to have really large dolls to burden um, doll club members of mine who are helping me bring things home or even to ship. So everything's pretty tiny. I kept to that pretty well. I had a Thuriel ship me one thing, which we'll uh, take a look at during this video. And everything else um, either fit into the suitcase I shipped home or I was taken home for me by one of my doll club members, one of my friends. So that made things easy. I do want to say that a UFTC provides usually in the hotel, someone's there the last day or so where you can ship things home. And this time, instead of shipping home boxes, I brought an extra suitcase, soft-sided, and I put in a ton of bubble wrap and I shipped the suitcase back with everything that I could, including books and other things that I had needed for the convention, including for my meetings as regional director and got it all back um, for about $90 and it came back safely. And I would do that again, I think, instead of shipping home lots of boxes when I fly, I thought this was a very effective method of getting my, my belongings home without having to carry them myself. So it is something I would most definitely look into next time I am at a convention and FedEx did a great job. Um, absolutely no damage to anything, including the luggage. Let's take a look at what I have. Um, and it's no particular order. I've just brought everything here so I can show you what I got, what my doll haul was from the UFTC convention in August. So here we go. One of the things I received, which was really lovely, UFTC has several fundraisers. Of course, we're a nonprofit organization and we were very lucky um, Elaine Pardee um, passed um, she was very well known, especially for Nancy and storybooks in the world of dolls. And she donated her dolls to UFDC so they could be used for fundraising. The first night of the convention, maybe it's a pre-night, but anyway, right at the beginning of the convention, there was a ice cream fundraiser, ice cream social. And if you donated over a certain amount of money, I think it was $50, you actually, thanks to Elaine, they were get, letting you have dolls in a trivia contest. So I was very lucky. Um, I knew Elaine very well, and she had been to my home and had spoken with my doll club when I was up in Northern California. So I was really happy. I got this beautiful uh, mint in box doll. She is a little miss uh, from the 50s um, in her box. And um, because she belonged to Elaine and I do collect fashion dolls, I was very excited to um, be, get this doll. And I did not give my donation with the expectation of getting a doll. So it was just very lovely to be able to, um, to have this. So uh, thank you to UFTC and to Elaine's uh, family and estate. Another wonderful doll that I got at the UFTC convention is Goldie Wilson did a luncheon. And Goldie is a remarkable artist. Um, she's a black artist. And uh, this was, I believe, her first luncheon she's ever done for us. And I believe it might also be the first luncheon that an African-American doll artist has ever done for UFTC. So it was absolute delight to get in and it had a Christmas theme. This is the beautiful handmade, look at these gorgeous dolls. It's a doll with her own little dolly that can also be a Christmas ornament. And I just thought she did such a great job. Look at the painting on this and the beautiful um, fabrics used. Uh, you know, Goldie is just so, so talented. I 
was thrilled to get this. Um, she also had dolls that were available. Um, you could win the centerpiece or some others for a donation that, you know, everything she makes is completely made by her. So um, what a wonderful um, doll and what a great event. I really enjoyed it. It was a dessert event. So we were able to um, have dessert and that kept the cost of the event down and was kind of nice to have that break in your day. In this, I was a table hostess for the Jenny Sykes event. It was about dollhouse dolls. And um, there's a, she made this beautiful, it's about six inches tall, a little less actually, because um, it's in one twelfth scale, which is Josephine. And she's a reproduction of Simon Hall made 1160, which is a dollhouse sized doll. And um, so that was the souvenir uh, from the lo this lovely event, uh, which was quite nice. <music> I was also table hostess for Theory Else event. And for that, um, Stuart Holbrook wrote a book, The Never Ending Stories, which I believe will be available from um, Doll Masters, um, Theory Alts, after. I, I think it was not exclusive to our event, but it's a wonderful book. It's all about doll collectors that um, Stuart, who is the president of Theory Alts, met along the way. He's a very good raconteur and writer, so I highly recommend the book, but it was super nice to get this um, at the evening dinner, I believe. And also made for the event was a silk scarf made by Theory Alts, and this was limited only to the actual event attendees. It's really pretty. It got some, I can't quite see it from here, but some jumeaux and just beautiful scarf. Very, very lovely. I'm not much of a scarf person, but if I were, see, it would also look amazing, right? So very, very nice. And also just great to hang in your doll room. At that event, I was again a table hostess. And if you're at these events and um, you can help out as a table hostess, you get there early, you make sure the tables are set up. If there are centerpieces, you set those up. You make sure everything is ready. If there are um, bids that need to be made, you know how to take people's tickets. So it's not a ton of work, but you get there usually about an hour before and it's just nice to help make the events run smoothly. Right before the event, Nyada has their convention and they have a sales room and they have a luncheon. And it's a wonderful luncheon, highly recommend it. Uh, beautiful dolls, um, they get, they're so generous. There's so many dolls given as um, table favors and also um, centerpieces as well as uh, little helpers. Someone in my doll club got three beautiful dolls. I didn't win anything, but the doll that they did for right there, Little Puck, it was a, a theme of A Midsummer Night's Dream. And this is by Randy Taylor is the artist. And he, he's just wonderful. He stands, oh, I guess about, about five inches, maybe four and a half inches tall. So he, again, completely artist made and uh, really just lovely. I didn't uh, spend a lot or do a lot in the sales room this year because I was going to be going to Japan and also was trying to stay to a budget. So I didn't do much. Um, I had this tiny little um, cloth doll, which was not terribly expensive, but is old. And I'm always looking for dolls that are not bisque, that are small. I do a lot of programs about dolls and I like to be able to show older dolls made of other things, such as cloth or leather, wood. It's very hard to find the tiny dolls. So this uh, just unusual little doll that I got in the sales room. And then my major purchase in the sales room was I have this absolutely wonderful um, she's a size zero um, brew that belonged to Evelyn Ackerman, who I knew. And it was her favorite doll, according to her daughter. So she is in my collection now. And I, um, she doesn't have brew shoes, but uh, she does now because I found a pair of marked size zero brew shoes that fit her perfectly. That was my um, big purchase. Um, it was expensive, not something I would normally do, but it's a very special doll to me. So that was my major purchase in the sales room. Something we get at convention are the beautiful souvenir journals. And this one here is Journeys of Discovery, One Doll's Adventure. And it's really cool. It's about a, a grown and tall wood doll that um, from 1840 and her life, if you will, like what it was like for all the places she'd been and collections she'd been in. And she talks about other dolls along the way. And it's, uh, it was edited by Florence Theriault this year. And it's just, it's just a wonderful book. Um, I have these going back 30 years 
and uh, they are all wonderful. So this was part of my haul. I love these books. So the convention doll. The convention doll was done by uh, Charlie and Alicia Carver um, in their C.S. Carver company and they make wooden doll reproductions and they are marvelous. And this one that uh, we got um, as the convention souvenir was came in this beautiful wooden box and it's a limited edition of 350 dolls. And this is the doll, Dolly, who is a reproduction of um, a doll that was owned by a little girl in the Donner Party who the doll survived that horrible winter that they spent up in the Sierra Nevada mountains and she had hidden the doll and had taken it with her and it got all the way to California. And the original of this doll resides in, this, in a Sacramento museum to this day. So this doll is a reproduction of that doll. And she's been freshened up a little bit from what the original would look like, but just absolutely beautiful. Hand carved, just they do incredible jointing on these dolls, if you can see it. Also available, I'm a big into trunks for dolls, and there's a trunk. So this is the trunk, that dolly's trunk, and it comes with numerous, it's got a map of the, um, the Donna Party, how they went across the U.S., and then it has lots of little um, outfits or sleeping garments, um, just beautiful little dresses, all from the time period of when that doll um, was made. Quite, quite a lot of little outfits, a little cape in there. Isn't that beautiful? Also wonderful. Along with some accessories, there's a, a little quilt in here, as well as a basket of knitting, a little bit of a little book. But that's the, the uh, companion piece, if you will, to the convention doll for this year. I went to the Tonner dinner, which I love every year. And he had, uh, the doll is called Celebrating Beautiful Views. This is the 16 inch Lacey Churchill fashion doll. And he, um, Robert did one last year for the UFDC dinner. And this is, I believe the second one of the series, plus two variations for the centerpieces. So they're really lovely, a new body sculpt, uh, just beautiful face. And so that was the, the Tonner dinner. And for the program for that dinner, Robert did a really interesting program on Mid Journey, which is a AI for uh, visual art. And it was really cool. He did um, some tilers in different type of circumstances and ages. And it was really, really fun um, and uh, different to um, see that program. And then finally, um, right before the convention, I went to the Fairy Alls auction. And again, I was kind of limited. I didn't buy a lot this year, but I bought one piece I was real excited about. I got a wonderful little wooden toy stall, a Nuremberg wooden toy stall from um, about 1890 that was in the Mary and Cecil collection. And I'm gonna unbox it. It came to me, I had to send it. And it arrived pretty recently because they couldn't send it while I was in Japan. Just got it out of the box. Hopefully, it's all in one piece. I hope that's the ceiling. All right, I'm gonna put it over here. So oh, still unpacking. I don't know if you can see it, but everything is quite apart and will need to be reattached. I will try to show you a picture of it when I have reattached everything on that.
about it. I'm almost done, but I did get one doll in Japan that I did want to share with you. So in the Ginza area of Tokyo, there was a really incredible five-story toy store called Toy Park. And Toy Park, um, is, it's a wonderland. It's like F.A.O. Schwartz was, only on steroids. And they, it's hard to know if you don't read Japanese, but in the basement, they have an entire department which is on dolls. I got a Lika fashion doll, which is kind of like a Japanese Barbie of many, many years. And I got an outfit for her, which is this one. And the reason I got it is I have a collection of Alice in Wonderland dolls. My daughter was Alice in Wonderland when she was younger in a big production, a theater production. And so I have a small collection of just Alice's. And so this will be one when she is dressed, one of the Alice in Wonderlands in my Alice in Wonderland doll collection. So that was my one Japanese purchase, not quite UFTC, but it was on the same trip, so I kind of wanted to share it. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed um, this episode of Dolls with D. Thank you for all of you who have joined us. If you haven't joined us yet, please get a subscription, hit that subscribe button, and also put on your notifications, give this video a like. We're brand new to YouTube and we would love to take you along on our doll journey. Thank you for watching. You've been watching Dolls with D. Mm -hmm.